In our final series on how you can venture into poultry farming, we learn how one can easily manage a big number of chicken on a farm and gain tremendous profits. The major factor why some businesses fail is negligence by employers to monitor and effectively supervise their employees. A very unusual boss is Cecile Kansime, who has reared chicken for over five years. She was an employee with NSSF, but later quit to start up a more comfortable venture. After juggling through jobs, poultry farming is what she's reared down to, and now owns a meat farm in Chuenda on Gayaza Road that lies on three and a half acre piece of land. Different from other bosses out there, Kansime does not leave the farm to her employees to manage. Rearing chicken became her full-time job. Her continued presence and monitoring the growth of her birds from when they are bought from the hatchery till when they are ready to be sold is the reason why she manages to rear over 30,000 birds on her farm. She practically raised all these from chicks to now money-making layers. On the farm, there are three blocks and each block has three rooms. On every block is a bigger room where she rears 3,004 birds and the remaining two blocks on each block has at least 2,005 birds. This number does not include the over 8,000 chicks we profiled in our previous episode. Now to ease the process of rearing this large number, Kansime opted for a battery cage system which is predominantly used for laying hens worldwide. The battery cage system involves the arrangement of rows and columns of identical cages connected together in a unit. The cage system has tremendous advantages. One of them is easy stock taking. It makes it simplifies for you. You can know that in this room I'm missing this number of birds. The one is missing. What happened? Two, you, you easily identify the sick. Because right now if I just saw like people, okay, people who have dealt in poultry, you can look at the stool and you know these birds are sick. So if it is just a starting infection, you can identify which ones. So before you medicate the whole team, you can identify the sequence easily. Three, it reduces on the work uh, via fighting with workers. Because with depleter, you have to make sure they change the water, they change the feed, like you left, you saw how I told the gentleman to work on it. So it, it is a, a power struggle. If you're not there, you're not sure of what is being done. But with this one, your water flows systematically. So you're comfortable that the water is flowing and the birds are having enough. The only challenge comes in where the nipple is blocked and it is not bring, bringing enough water. And those ones you can easily electrify. electrify. Then also, uh, the feed, you, you, they put in enough, but you don't have to keep running after the worker to go back and put more feed. So it reduces most of the work, yes, and you find it, it's very easy for you. However, the cage system comes with disadvantages. It causes uh, paralysis. And even they become paralyzed. Yes, that is if you don't measure for them the food where you just say workers just put. But you, you're supposed to weigh the food that you give them and make sure that is what is put there and evenly spread. But it causes some birds to be fat, be extra fat, which, which reduces the production. Also the paralysis, the birds tend to get paralyzed. To overcome most of these challenges, she is helped by 18 employees. In circumstances when water cannot be channeled through the pipes to the chicken, they come in handy to oversee that. To reduce the cost of the bill of water she uses on the farm, this innovative farmer pumps it from underground. On a daily basis, 3,000 liters of water are channeled to each block for the chicken to drink. Is we pump from underground to the tanks, what we call our reserve tanks. 
We have reserve tanks because we don't farm as they drink, no. The, the chances that uh, water might not be there, but when you have the reserve tanks, you're sure that they'll drink from them like for two, three days. That's good enough. So what we do, we pump into our reserve pump tanks, and then the tanks send to the block tank. Now each block, like I told you, has three rooms. So each block drinks from one tank. Mm -hmm. 1,000 so, liters? Yes, 1,000 liters. Mm -hmm. So each but, block? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, but it can take three or two depending on the day. The weather, the response from the birds, if they are not sick, if there is no medication in the water, they tend to drink lots of water. Mm -hmm. So like each block can take two to three tanks, that is two to three thousand liters a day. Yeah. Pumping is an option. Yeah. <laughs> so pumping water is an option than buying water from. Uh, yes. Water now buying water is be. damn expensive. You imagine where you're buying. Yeah. And each block is taking around three thousand liters. Mm -hmm. And these are that three blocks. Day. So those are 9,000 liters, almost 10,000 liters per day. Okay. Uh, how much would you pay for national water? I know. It's a lot of money. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I think each unit is now 3,000. So you can imagine. Like so it would be a lot liters. of money. A day, you would find yourself paying 350. And for a month, you would be stuck. To gain as much profit from your chicken like Kansime, you need to feed the chicken with quality feeds. Now like you see, this feed you're seeing has in a concentrate which we said we get from, uh, we replaced Mukene. Now we no longer use Mukene on this farm. So we use something called a concentrate from a company called Cow Dice, the Dutch company, which gives us that complete feed. Now, a kilo of that concentrate goes for 4,000. A kilo of mukene today is at 4,5. So some people have this tendency of saying, ah, we work with this imported feed. It's not that. It's the logic and the pricing. Because now I've saved 500 from my mukene, which is 4,5, and I put the 4,000 to the concentrate. However, this concentrate, you find that you're adding more of maize and brand. So you find that you're not saving the 500 per se, it is going to add on to this more, yes. But in the long run, you're better off, so I don't use any more fish, that's why you can't feel the stench, that's why you don't see lots of fries around and it has helped me a lot in reducing infections, tummy issues. Yeah. So you find birds suffering from uh, stomach upset, rotting of the intestines, which is as a result of feed, not as, an, as a result of disease or infection, but feed. So uh, when I started trying it out, I noticed the difference. So I stopped using mukene and started in a few months from now, she'll be able to process some feeds from her farm, but for now, she buys. Here is an example of the type of mixture of the feeds she gives to her chicken to give her what she really needs from them. It is a concoction of that concentrate, sunflower, soya, lime, bran, broken, Broken is kasori, na yenga. Tomote kamu yena hole, you crush it, but it stays with those particles, so that's why we call it broken. Yes. Now every chicken gives her an egg every day, and she expects at least a hundred trays every day. This is from each room on these three blocks. Like I told you, there is three thousand and four. So at least this room, I expect a hundred trays. Yes, every day. But they may not come a hundred trays because I've told you some birds skip in. Some birds, at least it should be 99, 98, that is normal. 96, depending on the weather. Also, the weather affects them. If there was a scare that day, they could give you less. So, but at least I should be having 90 and above. 
for me to feel comfortable. On a good day, Kansime collects over 540 trays of eggs. According to her, just 500 trays of eggs can be collected on a bad day. At least uh, in a day, because like I told you, they vary in age. The old ones don't give you that much. So in a day we collect around uh, 520 trays. If it's a normal day, it's, if it's a very good day, we can go to 530 or 40. Yes, if it is a bad day, sometimes we go to 500. The market of eggs across the East African region is available. Bulky buyers from Chisanyi Market and Owino Market help with selling them off. However, they are self-proclaimed international buyers Kansime does not deal with. But they have a tendency. They either come and disappear after time because of the frustration of demand of yes, the prices and also the demand. Then also, in most cases, the farms that have dealt with them without an agent from Uganda, they tend to steal them and they don't come back. So we, we are a bit uh, hesitant to deal unless we know the people we are dealing with or we know that it is a company. But these people who come in the name of Congo, but I'm taking for Congo, you're not sure. They need to penetrate in your farm, learn a few things, and the next thing... Her bulk buyers take the eggs in turns. These bulk buyers, they prefer to buy weekly. So if you have like two, three bulk buyers, they'll choose days. Because if you say, all of you come on Friday, I may not have enough stock to give them. So if we say maybe I have three buyers who every week take 2,000 and above, they'll pick different days. So if you're picking on Tuesday, that's your day. If he's picking on Friday, that's his day. Kansime discloses how much you could earn in a week by just selling eggs but not chicken. Before, 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 before expenses. Yes, before expenses. If I'm to sell a week, that mm -hmm. means I have sold maybe I'm giving an approximate of 4,000 trays mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. in a week, mm -hmm. and I'm selling to at at uh, maybe at a price of like 8,100 maybe. That is around 32 m in a week. In a week. Every entrepreneur's satisfaction is to make profits, but that comes as a result of hard work. Kansime has laid it down properly for you who believes railing poultry could be your breakthrough. I am Ruthie Naseje, reporting for New Vision TV.